thank you, and welcome to First Perk on Friday at the Bushwhacker. Welcome to the Strathy building. Come on in the elevator. So this is the elevator. It operates manually, and so you have to drive it yourself. When most people say, oh, I feel like I'm in New York or someplace, it sets the mood right away the minute they enter in the, in the elevator. They know that they're actually in a warehouse. Well, I went out for lunch with some friends, and I was telling them about this condo. And of course, it had been a, a dream of, of mine to have a warehouse condo for, I don't know, 20 years or more. I said I got this plan, and I took a napkin, and we drew it out. It sort of turned out exactly the way I had envisioned. Hey, actually, that was the, the, the late 70s that uh, acquired this place. When I came in here, it, it had been dead vacant for quite a few years. It had been a warehouse building before, and so all the floors in it were basically like what you see here except the, you know, the floors weren't brought up, the uh, sandblasting wasn't done. It, uh, you know, it was in derelict condition. It's one of the reasons that I was attracted to it initially. It's a, it's a beautiful building and incredibly well built. Before I went into the Rupa business, I attended several annual meetings of people in the business and started picking everybody's brains. Visited dozens of brew pubs and looked at ideas. And uh, brew pubs tend to work well in uh, in classic old buildings and uh, this was the right one and even the owner of the building at the time I didn't think it would make sense to put a brew pub in this part of town and it was one of our it was a little bit of a hindrance but like brew pubs in other cities we at least contributed to sort of seeding this area as southern Saskatchewan's entertainment strip the tornado of, I believe, 1912 traced an interesting path across the city. It came in from the southwest and came kind of straight up Lauren and Smith Streets. It severely damaged uh, the library, um, which is in the spot of the current library, uh, Knox Metropolitan Church, and you can still see the, the, the traces of the rebuilding there. And uh, then it continued to head north across the tracks and into the warehouse district here. There were quite a few residents, residential units along Dudney. The mayor lived down the street. This corner had a Chinese laundry on it, and there were some residents behind it. And the great Regina cyclone, which of course was actually a tornado, came through here, leveled everything on this property. He had actually formed the crack that you see in the building next door. Out of the rubble of that event, somebody in the warehouse business in Winnipeg decided to put a what he wanted to be the classic top-of-the-line Cadillac warehouse on this property. And the building was opened around March of 1914. Uh, a lot of buildings that were built after the tornado were built with that in mind, that Regina could suffer another one. And so you see a lot of our heritage buildings um, have solid foundations and are large properties with a significant sort of internal structural components. You can't buy that nowadays. Stylistically on the exterior, it's, they're, they're such simple buildings that uh, they're almost difficult to talk about in terms of a traditional architectural style. It's suggested that this building follows a, a Chicago style. Now Chicago style, to me, is really defined by an expression of this idea of a frame, a structural frame, and the area of the windows and the configuration of the windows. And if you look at a true Chicago-style building, you'll see a building that has a lot of glass. But I don't quite see that here. The windows are relatively small, and I'm wondering if it's just not a response to the climate. You see elements of Romanesque architectural style that's in the heavy, rough stone base. You see really tiny little classical elements in the uh, stone trim over the entrances, the little cornices that, that crop up over the entrances, and the scroll work. And you even see little Gothic revival details just in the kind of low arches at the top of the windows at the, on, the, on the top floor. It was designated uh, a municipal heritage property based on 
um, its significance as a warehouse in the warehouse district. It's recognized um, for its brick and tindle stone characteristics, its post and beam construction, tin roof elements in the main floor. Again, it's sort of its location along a historic streetscape, which is the Dudney Avenue streetscape. The area we're in with the pressed tin ceiling, of course, was the area where the offices were. Uh, they hired a young man named Strath D, brought him over from, Str from Scotland, and uh, sent him over here to manage the property. And his office, I suspect, was over there in the corner where the brew house is now. And um, the rest of the area underneath the tin ceiling was for the display of the, the products for sale in the building. They came in the back on railway cars, and a small army of manual laborers, porters if you like, they were called, called at the time, moved the goods on steel wheel carts, so they still have one. And on both sides of the building there are bays where trucks, obviously small by today's standards, would back up, be filled, and the things would be hauled away. I think that after James Strathby's death, the building was bought by Sears and became the Sears Warehouse. While it was a Sears Warehouse, there was a fire on, I believe, the fourth floor, and you ha you've seen the pictures of the firefighters throwing water on it. I think one of the next things that became was the Saskatchewan Liquor Authority became their office and warehouse. Uh, Crescent Furniture was in here. It was our very first customer, and they were in for five years. They were a, a very good tenant. Following him, we had another furniture, one single use for the, for the whole building. The next use was the, uh, called the Strathby Mall. And uh, it was actually a wonderful place. It uh, had its grand opening in November the 10th, 1989. It's a date I remember very well because it was my, my uh, second son was born that very day and I wasn't able to attend the, the uh, grand opening. This, this entire floor was uh, a sort of stalls. You can still see some of the, the sections there of the lattice work that divided off those stalls. The third floor, second floor, and uh, part of the, the first floor was all of this Strathby Mall. We would have had, I'll bet, 40 or 50 users in here. It was like a, a little market. And uh, the uh, Bushwhacker Brew Pub was in uh, their space by that time. Uh, the, the top floor was uh, subdivided into storage spaces, which sort of gradually got taken over by artists that had, uh, were using them for studios. And it was a very lively place in those days. Unfortunately, the, uh, the traffic simply did not develop for that mall. The, then we got more into the, some of the office uses and residential units, units that have taken over that space. I actually had lost the place because I didn't act fast enough and it was sold and so I thought well that's it and I started looking at other spaces but I had that plan in my head and I just couldn't get it out and nothing was going to turn out as good. So I sat on hold for a while and, uh, and about eight months later I saw an ad in the paper again. I thought my god that's the same place. And we hammered out a, a deal and, uh, and voila, I'm here. <laughs> the designation for this building um, is specifically for the facade. So it's the exterior elements that we're concerned with the most. And that's the 99% of the case with most buildings. The city designates the exterior and allows property owners to develop the interior. So we started construction in August of 1990 and we opened uh, what about January 24th in 1991? You know, it, it didn't look much like it does now, that's all I can say. Regina Modern Furniture had uh, tried to make it look modern in their day, which looked pretty junky when we moved in, and a lot of the attractiveness, like the wooden posts and beams, had been covered over. The place was just a bare shell. I came up with a plan and design myself. Most of the construction was done with the help of my friends and myself and I'd hired workers through the Salvation Army to do some, some of the work. It's been restored to a large extent by the private property owners and as well as the, um, the, the owners of the overall building originally and it has a lot of um, public who come into the building for the uh, restaurant on the main floor and they can see the benefits. They can see the post and beam construction, the tin roof, uh, the wooden floors, the brick interiors. It's a good example of what you can do. A mix of uses 
is, I think, always good in a building, and it's something that uh, was historically typical, and I think we, it's something that we kind of lost or threw away in the 1950s. The kind of modernist urban design plans of that period were all centered around functional zoning and that was splitting different functions into different areas of the city. One would never contemplate living above a shop the way one did sort of a generation before that, or living in an industrial area, or living in an area near to where you worked. It's not as soundproof as, uh, as some other buildings because it, it, was, it wasn't built for that purpose. So to have the offices in between the uh, living spaces they're, they're there during the day, for the most part, and the condo people are here at night. So it really cuts down on the noise, but also it's, it's nice to connect with the people that are working in the offices, and, and there's a lot of people coming in and out of the building, and it, and it gives it a lot of life. And you're in the home of Westwind Pictures, Java Post Production. And we've been here since, I believe, 1999, and we've developed into what I think is a pretty nice office space. Uh, we've tried to keep the original feel of the building, keeping the ceilings open, as you can see. And basically, we want to keep the old warehouse look, but make it a functional office. I'll take you back to where Westwind Pictures operates out of, which is in the corner, if you want to follow me. This is a corner office, so it tends to be uh, brighter, but sometimes a little colder on those cold winter days. But it's a nice, bright space to work out of, and this has the most brick of any of the offices. Well, actually, a point of interest while you guys are here, this is the old dumbwaiter. The door for the old dumbwaiter now is just used as a service shop for uh, air conditioning lines, etc. But this at one time was used to uh, bring goods up from the lower floor to the higher floors, and I believe there would have been one of these on every floor. This is the, uh, the last area that we renovated. In fact, what we had to do was remove a closet that was existing in here and we sandblasted the uh, paint off about 140 square feet of brick, uh, much to the chagrin of our neighbors because the dust ended up going all over the place, but that's an issue for another day. We've paid for the cleanup cost for that and made peace with our neighbors, but we wanted this to look with the original brick look, and so I think it's turned out quite well. We're just doing a few finishing touches, then it's going to be another editing suite for us. The pluses are it's an interesting and unique space for the clients to come into, and they appreciate that. It's something they don't see every day. The minuses are it's uh, community living. We're surrounded by, uh, by residential uh, people, which are, again, we have great neighbors, but it does create some noise issues for both of us. So we're in my office, Asian Productions. This is where we create all of our stuff. It really lends itself to, to creativity. The wooden beams, the, the, the walls, the, the brick very organic. Uh, we get lots of compliments when people come in to see our space. Um, they really like it. The tall ceilings, you feel very open and very not oppressed. I mean, I like to be the only one who oppresses people around here. I don't like the building to do that. So I really believe the architecture and the, and the space itself defines uh, the, the vibe of the place. The, the warehouse district has really kind of come together to make itself kind of a scene in the city um, and it's it's really cool to become a part of that. Um, you walk in right away and you, you know you feel you feel like you're in a different world. You know you're not the, the obviously the windows are a hundred years old, the the sunlight is is just kind of creeps in. It's not like the new the new buildings that you have. It's grandiose windows. Well, it, it's just it's spectacular. You know we love it. We've uh, we started out about three blocks down in a different warehouse building, and then uh, we found the Strathdee Mall, and we decided that this is what we want to call home. So we are, we've been to two different places in this building, and we decided to purchase this, this space. So we purchased this level and the space below us, and we'll be here until we're done. It's wonderful. I love it. You know, I was in the, uh, the, the unit, the residential unit that's in the, the top floor facing downtown, and I was in there one at, after dark one night, and it's just a glorious view out there to downtown Regina. Some of the, the nicest homes in this city are now in this warehouse district, and uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very, it's, it's a little known uh, phenomenon because uh, you know, people don't ordinarily see those. I designed the layout. Uh, after I heard that I had got it, I 
got the purchase, I immediately came here and did all the measurements, went home on the computer and downloaded a program and designed it all on the computer. The idea when I was designing it was basically an open concept and something that kind of fit the characteristics of an old warehouse building, you know. Highlight the natural floor, natural ceilings and the brickwork that you don't really get to see in modern houses as well as with some modern amenities and lots of space and storage basically is my whole idea behind it. Uh, well, a lot of things that I like is you know definitely the, the lights around the outside you know you could dim it set the atmosphere. The spacious kitchen for entertaining because you know we get six people in there sometimes cooking for you know 12 to 14 people and you don't even interfere with each other. Oh, it took a long time. I think I was working here on and off for probably a good part of a year. I mean, the neighborhood's good. Like, you get young crowd, you get energy, you get, you know, people who are sociable. That can sit and have a couple drinks before a football game and walk over. It's really convenient to, you know, all the necessities of an active person. We all grew up with walls and everything, and um, so that took some time to getting used to, but. Uh, I quite like it now. Probably the thing that most people uh, like about it is that uh, the beams are painted black. When I first moved in, it was all the same color wood with the beams, the floor, and the ceiling, and it just seemed that uh, uh, doing the beams and the doors kind of gave it some nice contrast. Yeah, I, I like working out of my home. Uh, I'm a financial advisor, so I do all my phoning here. I have computer and printer and everything here. Yeah, it's a lot of fun uh, living in a warehouse space. We had a nice great cup party here. <laughs> With limited economic funds at that time, I was looking at possibly downtown uh, and thinking of my clients for parking was certainly one of the considerations. Uh, when I first viewed the unit, there were uh, two storage units where the offices had been developed and uh, the part that we're sitting in right now uh, was uh, a modeling agency. But I had an individual along with me and uh, the individual said, how much is this unit when we were just looking at the modeling agency component? And I said, well, this is part of all three, and it's included in the price. And, and she looked at me and said, buy it. The objective of my design was to uh, develop a, a business which would afford me the luxury of having a kind of a crash pad. The design was somewhat complicated in that I wanted to be assured that it would be easily converted into a residence. Number one, the thought was I could uh, lock out the business from the residence and, and rent off one or both parts in the future. I developed a living room with a large open space, which could in the future be closed off and used as another bedroom. I'm just pleased with the openness of the layout and the fact that uh, it's easily uh, changeable. The uh, large door in the bedroom can be closed off and you can cocoon, your, cocoon yourself off from the rest of the residence. But when it's open, it provides a nice open feel to the floor plan. Uh, there are a lot of opportunities for uh, services, uh, computer consultants, um, I'm getting, currently I'm getting some electronic equipment fixed a half a block away. It's, you just run out of the condo and pick it up. Uh, it's really surprising what you can get done um, in the neighborhood. Well, the downside for me is uh, that I like the country and uh, I, f I feel disconnected from nature when I'm in this building. There have been some talks about developing a green roof on on top of the building, which would certainly provide that outlet, which would be a benefit in the future. It has these huge um, wood beams and the ceiling is the rough, so it really gives you uh, the warehouse feel. I kept one room with brick walls in it and the other, other walls I insulated and covered with chip rock. The floors are all original, maple, three-quarter inch maple. They have uh, some flaws in them because they had forklifts and things like that driving over them. I kind of wanted a big central hall and I wanted to show it off kind of as like an art gallery. Well, I designed the kitchen that is kind of like an alcove in the hall. Sometimes when I'm entertaining, you have people in the kitchen and some people standing in the living room overlooking and uh, ordering drinks. <laughs> yeah. 
I put in a kind of a lifelong dream of uh, having a urinal in there. People who come over usually marvel at that the most of anything, you know. I work in the steel industry, and so I've built other other features in the in the condo. A friend once said it was casual elegance. Well, the windows, uh, being a warehouse, um, were quite high off the, f off the floor. I raised the living room area so that if you're sitting in uh, Chesterfield um, or chairs or whatever, you can still see out the window. I think it's probably one of the best views in Regina. It feels to me like I'm on a river, a working river, where you've got barges and tugs going up and down. It's also like having your own personal train set. You know? And then you have the, the backdrop of the, the city skyscrapers. In terms of the exterior for this building, uh, it would be windows, window treatments, uh, such things as balconies, signage, awnings, stairways, entrances. That would probably be our, our main concern, that they reflect the original intent of the building. As the building is a heritage building, we can't change the, the structure, and so there, there wouldn't be an option to hang balconies. Not being able to get outside and to have some access to um, the outdoors is a bit of a drawback. So it would be nice if we were to develop the roof. So I got involved with this project when Bev actually put out a call to the university asking if anyone was interested in doing green roof research. And um, although it's something I've never worked in before, it immediately tweaked my interest and I contacted Bev and we've been meeting and discussing and planning and scheming ever since. We do have behind us a weather station which is gathering baseline data on the weather on this roof. We're changing data loggers in the weather station, so Brad here is uh, just rewiring everything. So I'm holding the sheet for him. <laughs> Most of the data will be on temperature uh, on the roof, the rainfall, solar radiation. Dr. McMartin will be using this information to study the performance of the roof. We are gathering the components of the first test plots. First thing in the spring, we'll be planting the first plants. And we have a number of experiments involving those test plots, involving drainage, materials, uh, the nature of the uh, growing medium, mixtures of plants and so on. There are several environmental benefits. The most obvious would be the aesthetic benefit. It's a prettier space and when we're looking at an area like the, the warehouse district, there aren't a lot of green spaces in the area. So we do see increased energy conservation, primarily in the summer months when the plants are active. Um, so we should be noticing lowered air conditioning costs. In the winter, some energy conservation is expected, but again, we don't really know what kinds of numbers to expect on that. Um, water quality and water conservation is, is certainly another area where we can actually take some rainfall that's currently just going straight into the storm sewers and out into Wascana Creek and maybe put it to better use. But until people know are confident that it actually works in this climate, which is pretty extreme, they're not going to want to put a lot of money into it. So the demonstration of the technology is, is another aspect that, that needs to be emphasized. You've got the, the character of the building, you know, and it's, it's brick, old warehouse district, and then you've got this new technology going on on top. So yeah, it's kind of a come together of the new and old, and yeah, really exciting. We hope that another year, two years maybe, you'll see this entire roof will be green. We've heard the ghost is James Strathy, who was, uh, I believe, a Scot who came here to run the building for uh, the original owners. He was apparently committed suicide, shot himself with a shotgun on the railway tracks out in front of the building. There's some people who used to work in the building who claim they met the ghost every day. There's been stories about one of the owners um, closing down for the night and had noticed a, a light on at the far end of the building and as he was about to lock up he yelled into the darkness towards the light. Um, James turned that light off and so in standing and looking the light immediately went up in power and then turned off. The notion of even changing uh, uh, zoning bylaws to recognize a mix of uses rather than this kind of strict functional zoning that divided up the city and its various uses. I mean, that's taking it to a kind of big scale. Uh, you know, the idea of a, a residence in a warehouse that also has a restaurant. <laughs> but it's, it's the result of those big scale planning ideas. They, they have an effect down to, 
down to the scale. The one big factor in this area continuing to uh, be of greater service to Regina, if you like, or becoming more dynamic, is the efforts to get the other side of the street, Dudney, developed. It's still being talked about. I don't know where it really is in terms of probability, but the rail, rail yard, not rail line, relocation uh, is something I hope to actually see within my lifetime. And the impact of that on this whole area and on Regina's image in the world, I think, um, would be very positive. We consider it a real success story in the city in terms of um, conversion and long-term use. There's some, some fabulous homes and some uh, highly successful businesses and uh, I think that uh, this uh, property is, uh, is no doubt secure for another hundred years. Yeah, so I'm creating a really comfortable space here for myself and I like to entertain and uh, have my friends over and uh, it works very well for that. Right. And make sure this one's up, that's right. Go ahead. So what